الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهده ونستغفره واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم alhamdulillah praising Allah and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having gathered us alhamdulillah on this day the last Jumu'ah before the month of Ramadan and alhamdulillah that Allah has lived allowed us to live to see the dawn of Ramadan we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having sent to us uh, a way of life alhamdulillah that if we follow it we will be the most successful we will be successful in this life and in the hereafter. If you were to think, alhamdulillah, about the mechanisms, the system that Allah has laid out for us, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes to us that in this way of life this this sirat that we're on this this path that there are periods of time in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives forgiveness walhamdulillah from one salah to the next salah. Now I want you to think about it for a minute. There are, there are people, alhamdulillah, they are struggling with difficult uh, aspects of their lives. Some of them, they commit crime. Some of them, they use drugs. Some of them, they have inappropriate uh, actions or relationships. And they're trying to beat their addiction to these problems but if they can go from one salah just ask Allah get me to the next salah and if I make some mistake let me ask for forgiveness Allah will forgive me from one jumwa to the next jumwa forgiveness so alhamdulillah whatever we did from last week to this week We ask Allah to accept our prayer, our request for Allah's maqfirah on this day and this sa'ah so that Allah can wipe away the sins that we had since the last Jumu'ah. And by the way, if you don't think you had any sins since the last Jumu'ah, ask Allah to forgive you for saying that. And from one Ramadan to the next Ramadan, and so maybe some of us have the kinds of sins or disobedience to Allah that the regular washing, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, wudu, when the person makes wudu and they come out and the water is dripping, it's like the sins are dripping off of them. But maybe some of us, we have more industrial type dirt. We want to get it off of us. Shahar Ramadan. Seeking in the month of Ramadan the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know that this narration ends that and from the beginning to Hajj. Some people, maybe they have something they did. They want Allah to forgive it and it's big. Shaitan won't leave them alone. So they go for Hajj. 
that Allah can give them the gift of his maghfirah. I want to say a few words about this because I, if you look in uh, Christianity or Judaism or others, uh, you will find them concerned about the issue of how do they get rid of their sins. And they have different rituals or beliefs. The crucifixion, they believe this is going to uh, absolve them from their sin. Everybody is concerned about how do you get rid of their sins. The Jews have Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, where they try to get the, the, the dirt off of them. Everybody has it. But there's something unique in Islam about the kind of forgiveness that Allah offers us. Ghafara is like, I want you to think maybe like if you commit a crime. You commit a crime and you go in and you say, the lawyer is going to get me off. I plead guilty. But I'm going to get off with no, no time served. I won't go to jail. But still, you have a criminal record. Because you pled guilty. Maybe there's some people, they have a political connection. They're incarcerated, but they can get a pardon from the governor or the president. They're pardoned. But if you look in their record, there's going to be the charge of that crime on their record. The Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said he used to make istighfar some, some riwayahs say 70 times, others say 100 times a day. Even though he doesn't commit sins like us. So for us, we're trying to think about what, what is this, this thing that Allah is offering us something better than having a uh, our sentence dropped or having uh, uh, our pardon this is not what Allah is offering us Allah is offering us the kind of forgiveness where your record is expunged when they look in the record they say what about such and such that you did they can't find any record because Allah has expunged the record of your sins. In the month of Ramadan, this is what is at stake for us in this particular unit of time for us to go through a process by which if Allah accepts our prayers and our fasting and our standing in the night and our spending in Allah's cause, that Allah will bring us out of the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, with the reward of his ghafara. That Allah, Ghafur Rahim, Allah's mercy is followed. What's leading is Allah's forgiveness, his ghafara. That's what we want. In this month, alhamdulillah, this upon us. If we set ourselves aright and say, Subhanallah, I'm going to get out of the month of Ramadan. What Allah has promised people. Kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba alladheena min kablikum la'alakum tattakun. That you will be in a state of taqwa. And that state, inshallah, should then guide you and protect you after Allah has forgiven you. 
There are many people who think they assume that we will make it into the month of Ramadan. I hope they're right. Because, alhamdulillah, the reward of this forgiveness and to live through it, alhamdulillah, even to find in the last 10 days Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. As a whole lifetime of forgiveness. There's something about forgiveness, and we're going to talk about it in the second half of the khutbah, that should be amazing for us as an ummah. Because it's not just enough to say, okay, I've been forgiven. Allah forgave me. But it should give us an extra gift when we come out of this process to make us better. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept us, walhamdulillah, that we might live into the month of Ramadan, that we might taste the sweetness, walhamdulillah, of this tarawiyah prayer, that we might in the month of Ramadan enjoy, walhamdulillah, the guidance and the shifa of the Qur'an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive us of our sins and enter us in his jannah ma'abrar. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله كريم. Brothers and sisters, I I used to 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 really wonder about something. I used to wonder. I hear you know Allah talk about in the Quran, Adam عليه السلام, and the Malaika look. And they say to Allah, you're creating Adam. I mean, you know, Malaika, we, we worship you. We, we obey you. We, we don't deviate from you. And, we, and you're going to create Adam. And you told us something about Adam. That Adam has free will. Adam has free will. And if Adam has free will, we already know from seeing the jinn that if they have free will, some of them are going to obey, some of them are going to disobey. And Allah informs the Malaika, I know something about Adam that you don't know. That you're going to be amazed at Adam السلام, and Adam and Hawa's descendants are going to amaze you. They say he's gonna, he's gonna shed blood. Yeah, but Allah is telling them, but there's something else. Then the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, tells us if we human beings did not disobey Allah and then ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah would destroy us and create a people who they would make mistakes. They would sin and then they would turn to Allah for forgiveness. This always seemed like a paradox to me. I don't understand. I began reflecting from the words of one of my teachers and said, Subhanallah, how do human beings get better? How do you get better? They said, show me someone who has never made a mistake and I'll show you someone who has never done anything. When they invented the incandescent light bulb, they failed 999 times. I don't believe it was 999. It seemed too perfect for me. But, you know, that's how they write history, you know. It's not the Quran. 
But on the thousandth time, they get it right. This is the lesson that we're learning from this. Allah created us knowing we're going to go out, we're going to try things, we're going to make mistakes. But how do you get better? They said the year that Babe Ruth, I don't know if you know who Babe Ruth is, famous baseball player, the year that he made the most home runs in baseball, that's the year he struck out the most. Human beings have to go out and try and struggle and fail. You want to start a business, be prepared to fail and fail again. And every time you fail, what do you do? You sit down, you reflect, you look at what you have done wrong. You try to correct the mistakes that you made. You make restitution if you have to. Creditors or people that you owe, they had faith in you. You let them down. You make a recommitment, alhamdulillah, and then you come out again. But with Allah, it's even better that when you go through that process with Allah, Allah wipes your debt clean. Allah doesn't hold it against you. Because Allah knows that by nature, you're going to make mistakes. My challenge to you today, walhamdulillah, to think about leveraging the month of Ramadan to expiate you from the sins of those mistakes that when you come back out you come back out stronger, better, improved and if we were not a people who had the capacity of uh, what some call tahasan tahasan, the ability to, to, to have accent to improve yourself what's the point I know that shaitan comes to you after you have made a mistake after you make tawbah shaitan comes to you and says don't believe Allah forgave you I know you I know you I know when you I was there when you were lying now you're trying to act like Allah going to forgive you for the stuff that you do. Not going to happen. You're going to hell along with me. I promised Allah on the day of judgment. That's what Shaitan, I'm telling you the truth. Shaitan said, I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to hell. And I'm taking you with me. Because you're worthless. You have all those sins and you're a hypocrite. You go back and you fail again. He says, isn't that one of the signs of hypocrisy? A person who they ask for forgiveness and then they go back and they do it again. Now we take shaitan as our teacher. You have to tell shaitan, excuse me. I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives sins. That's, the, that's Allah's business. Allah can forgive sins up to the heavens. And guess what? I believe in Allah. And I believe that Allah forgave me. I believe that we went through the month of Ramadan over a billion Muslims. And we asked Allah for forgiveness. And Allah is forgiving us. So we don't come out depressed. Man, I got all these mistakes. I ain't never going to, I ain't never going to, I keep failing all the time. Get up! Ask Allah to forgive you. Fast, pray, feed the hungry. And say to yourself, Ya Allah, I know what I did is wrong. I hate it. I'm not going back. I'm going to try. Ask you to forgive me, Ya Allah. And don't take anything for granted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive us. 
Brothers and sisters, I just want to close by saying to you that I'm always reminded of a man from this community, not, not Dar Hijra, but in Northern Virginia, who died days before the month of Ramadan. And when they investigated his death, the police said, no, we don't know how he died. They said, it must be suicide. The Muslim said, it can't be suicide. This is a brother. He's a very faithful brother in the community. He's a leader. He knows Allah. He knows the Quran. No way. Police said, well, that's all we have. They said, well, how, how, do, how do you know? His family said, because he went to Costco that day to buy his favorite cereal for Sahur. Not their favorite, his favorite. He was organizing his affairs to prepare for Ramadan. But he didn't make it. Well, alhamdulillah, we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him from his intentions. After Salat, I'm going to ask you, alhamdulillah, don't assume that you will live into the month of Ramadan. Help us, alhamdulillah, to support those who are fasting. We have a program, one of the greatest iftar programs in America, where every night we feed almost a thousand people every night. Families, women, children, everybody. I, I can think of few ways that it's easier to get the benefit of this month besides your prayer and your fasting than to feed those who are fasting and those who are in need. And I know some of the families, some of them, when I see them, you're not going to believe this, you see some of them, and I, I go over to a family, I say, Salaam alaikum, and the brothers they say, Salaam. I said, okay. His walaikum salam not right. He's here with his family because he needs food. In this county, one out of five children go to bed with their stomachs empty every night in Fairfax County. So you don't, we don't know who we're feeding in Ramadan. Some who are fasting and some who are starving. And so we ask you, alhamdulillah, after the salah, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. It costs $195 to feed one person per night in the month of Ramadan. I'm going to ask you after the Salah if you will join us to be, alhamdulillah, part of the army that will provide, alhamdulillah, for those who are fasting and those without food. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man afayt wa tawalana fi man tawalayt. O Allah, guide us among those whom you have guided. O Allah, protect us among those whom you have protected. Ya Allah, help us, walhamdulillah, that our prayer might be accepted, that you might cause us to live into the month of forgiveness, the month of Shahar Ramadan. O Allah, we pray, walhamdulillah, those who are suffering with difficulties, Ya Allah, whether around the corner or around the world, walhamdulillah, that you might help them and help us, walhamdulillah, to be emissaries of your peace. O Allah, we ask, walhamdulillah, for your mercy and your peace, on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his family and companions and upon all of the anbiya, ya Allah, and those who follow the way of your haq, ya Allah, until the day of judgment. Ameen.